Oh, I did wrong. Pause. Okay, pause. Yes, we are recording. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, okay, I'll tell you what, I could go a million directions tonight. Um, we spent the day at the prison. My, uh, this was the volunteer um, appreciation day, and so my husband took me as his plus one. And <clears throat> of all things, I got a certificate thanking me. I was like, why? But they're always like, you gave him to us. So that was very sweet to hear, you know, and he, he loves the work that he does. So, um, <clears throat> but anyway, I, you know, it was like, I said, couldn't they have asked me before they planned it on a Wednesday? <laughs> uh, but <laughs> apparently not. <laughs> anyway, um, I, I've had so many thoughts and directions, and I'm just trusting the Lord's going to bring out what we need tonight, okay? So, um, I do want to just... Uh, Go back, we're just going to go back a little bit to that chapter 6, and remember that we talked about the seals. That's where we had the, you know, Jesus was opening the seals. And, okay, and <clears throat> so um, we, I want to come down to the question in verse 17. Remember, this is where in 14 the sky receded, you know, it rolled up like a scroll, and um, that there was, uh, all, that the kings of the earth, the great men, the rich men, the commanders, the mighty men, every slave and every free man hid themselves in the caves and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and the rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of of the lamb um it's very sad that that that's the choice instead of turning to the lamb to be saved uh, but remember that's our work girls we've got to make people know that there's a, a lamb who can save you know? and um, so it says in verse 17 for the great day of his wrath has come and who is able to stand so there's a question out there, who is able to stand? How would you answer that question from what we know so far in the book of Revelation and what we know in our faith? What answers would you have to that question? Who can stand? Believers. Okay. It's a fair but we're answer. supposed to be throwing our crowns down at his feet, so even though we could stand, we're really on our knees. We're on our knees, yeah. Yes, standing in heaven might be a different posture, huh? <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, we need to stand on our knees, okay? Who can stand in the face of that <coughs> wrath? No, don't, don't think of it that way. Who can stand? Who can endure? Do it that way, perhaps. Who, when, that, when the wrath of God is poured out, who will be standing? Jesus. Well, Jesus, of course, would be standing, but what about us? Okay. I, was say, I, I think going back to the believers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good answer. It's a good answer. So let's see how John, what the answer came. Because when the scripture throws a question out like that, it generally answers that same question. Okay. So we, uh, after, after that moment, John says, after these things I saw, okay, <laughs> and um, there were the four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth or on the sea <clears throat> or on any tree. And then I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he carried with, and he cried out with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was granted to harm the earth and the sea. Okay, this is our change. See, this is their mess. This is their mission. They're going to harm the earth and the sea. Okay, saying, do not harm the earth and the sea and the trees till we have sealed the servants of God on their foreheads. Okay, and then he hears the number of those who were sealed. And we have the 144,000 from the tribes of Israel, right? Um, and I'll, I'll just say this, the tribes of Israel, these are the tribes of Israel. Mm -hmm. This isn't the church replacing Israel. Okay, because there is a theology out there called replacement theology, and it says that, you know, the, the Jews are lost. That's it. They crucified Christ. They're gone. God's done with them. This is really the church. That is a lie. 
Okay, a it big, says so. it says so. It's a big lie. So don't, don't buy into that. This is, these are representative of the tribe, of the tribes of Israel. They are the descendants of Abraham. God is not done with them yet. And God is, has given a gift to the tr people who will go through the tribulation of 144,000 pure saints, okay, who are going to be sealed with the seal of God. Now, we know later on there's going to be the mark of the beast, right? Mm -hmm. And those who, who receive the seal or the mark of the beast, they're going to be able to buy and sell and do everything. Okay, these guys are going to be sealed by God to, to be kept. And the most amazing thing is that they're going to go through some really horrible tribulations, but they're going to be safe. They're going to be safe from the wrath of God. So who can stand? Whoever is sealed. Okay, are we sealed? Yes. Yes, we are. Sealed by the Holy Spirit, right? Okay, and who remembers Ezekiel 9? I, I talk a lot about that being an Ezekiel 9-er. Who knows what an Ezekiel 9-er is? <laughs> okay, turn back to Ezekiel. I love the fact that, that there's little in the end of the Bible that hasn't already been in the beginning of the Bible. Okay. Ezekiel, okay. Ezekiel chapter 9. Say amen when you got it. Amen. Okay, we got some amens over here. That sound like everybody? Okay, so um, uh, okay, so I'm going to start verse 1. Then he called out in my hearing with a loud voice saying, Let those who have charge over the city draw near each with a deadly weapon in his hand. Okay, this is Ezekiel's vision, and it's an, a vision in Jerusalem. Okay, um, and suddenly six men came from the direction of the upper gate, with face, which faces north, each with a battle axe in his hand. One man among them was clothed with linen and had a writer's inkhorn at his side. And they went in and stood beside the bronze altar. The bronze altar is where the sin offerings were, you know, he brought the burnt offerings at that offering. Okay. Now the glory of the Lord of Israel had gone up from the cherub where it had been to the threshold of the temple. Remember in, in Ezekiel we see the glory of God moving out of Jerusalem, right? So it had already come from the cherub, whereas that's on the mercy seat where they sat between the cherubim and the glory of God was there. Now the glory of God has moved to the threshold of the temple. Okay. So we know that judgment is coming. Okay. So he says, and he called the man clothed with the inkhorn, or clothed with linen, who had the writer's inkhorn at his side. And the Lord said to him, go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and put a mark on the foreheads of the men who sigh and cry over all the abominations that are done within it. Okay? They're marking them. To the others, he said in my hearing, go after him through the city and kill. Do not let your eyes spare, nor have any pity. It's a terrible judgment, okay? But this is the fact. If you choose the wickedness, if you choose the unrighteousness and stubbornly hold to it, like let, let the mountains fall on us. You know, I'm not gonna turn toward God. I want the mountains to hide me. Where can you flee from his spirit? Yeah, you can't, okay? So here, here we have this same picture where those who sighed and cried were grieving over the abominations that were taking place in the temple. They were marked. They were sealed. Okay? Same thing. All right, so back to Revelation. Um, that, that's what it means to be an Ezekiel Niner, one who, sealed. who is <coughs> sealed, has, a, has been sealed by the Holy Spirit, marked by God. Remember, God has used this mark. Who, where's the first time we have about the mark of God? Cain. Yes, Cain. Mm -hmm. Was Come, it on his forehead too? Mm, no. I believe so, yeah. He was marked, and, um, and he was marked so that he wouldn't be killed, remember? Because he just knew he was going to go out there and everybody's going to kill him. So he was marked by God. Uh, but in this case, these are those who wept over the condition, the abominations. And you know, I think so much we don't weep. We're so just life's going on. 
your life's good, my life's good, mm. or my life's bad, whatever, but we're still going on about my life and much is happening around me that I'm not allowing myself to weep over. I'm not coming to the Lord and praying mm -hmm. about the condition of my world. As long as my world's okay, you know, or if my world's in a turmoil, that's the only thing I can see. So we, need, we do need to be Ezekiel Niners who, who are aware of what's going on in the world around us and, and pray, and pray. Not be afraid to know what's happening. I think that's part of it. A lot of us don't even want to turn the news on because I don't want to hear that. But, you know, the world is going to go the way of the world. Mm -hmm. Our concern should deeply be the temple of God, the worship of God, mm -hmm. the truth within the church. Okay. Are the churches going to have oil in their lamps? Mm -hmm. Or are they going to just carry on services Sunday after the rapture? You see that? Yeah. You know, do you want to be a church with no oil? <laughs> okay, so let's be sensitive to the condition of the Lord's temple and the Lord's worship. And, um, and that's what it is to be an Ezekiel Niner. And Ezekiel Niner can stand. The others were going to be slaughtered, and, but those had the promise of being kept. Okay? Um, okay. Who was able to stand? The 144,000 were able to stand. And then here we go in verse um, 9. Okay. After these things I looked, and behold, a great multitude, which, is, which no one could number of all nations, tribes, tongues, people's tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, with palm branches, in their hands, crying out with a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And then we know if we jump down, it says in verse 14, and I, uh, you know, and I said to him, Sir, you know who these are, right? So he said to me, These are the ones who come out of the great tribulation and washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Now, I wrote to you in the email. How many read the email? Okay. I wrote to you in the email that I believe these are the, this is the church. This is the rapture of the church, this great multitude here. I'm going to take it back. Someday I'll really know when it is. But. <laughs> Thank you for being transparent about that. <laughs> and, I, you know, it's okay to have a real strong opinion at one point and then be changed by something you understand later. Okay. Um, I happened to pick up Zola Levitt's book again, which I love. And if you saw the movie Before the Wrath, how many of you have seen that movie Before the Wrath? It's truly worth watching. And you can find it on um, YouTube. YouTube, right? Yeah, Before the Wrath. Um, but anyway, it, it all is based on the wedding, the Jewish wedding. You know, the Galilean wedding, because um, that was very specific. And so many of the things that Jesus said, behold, I, you know, go to prepare a place for you, and I will come for you after, you know, or I won't drink of this cup again until I drink it with you in my father's house. All those are wedding statements for the Galilean wedding. And, um, and so, you know, I just had to start wrestling again over the fact that the church is simply not going to be there for the tribulation at all. We, we are going to be with Jesus in the place that he's prepared for us in his Father's house. Okay, this other stuff, um, you know, and I, I kind of had to go like, okay, but Jesus is here. We see him, the lamb with the throw. Aren't we supposed to be with Jesus? We're going to be off in our bridal ch chamber. So, you know, your brain just kind of plays. I don't know if you do that, but I do that. <laughs> um, <laughs> bounce it back and forth, you know. And so I do not know at all when we're going to see the, uh, we're not going to see the rapture. The rapture's not written into the book of Revelation. As much as we try to make it be, I don't think it's there. The, the last we hear of the church through the book of Revelation is the, the letters, okay? That's the letters. And then we'll hear of the church again in the end because we will then be the bride and the wife, okay? So then that's, that's where we... They, the um, Zola Levitt in his, in his writings has always said that when, 
during the seven years of the tribulation, we will be with Jesus. And that's when we will undergo the Bema seat of Christ, where we, our works will be judged. That it's not like we're just going to, you know, sit around and do nothing. There is going to be the judgment of the church, of those who were saved, whether we built with wood, hay, and stubble, or gold, silver, and precious stones. Okay, so I don't know when we're going to see that. We're not going to see it written in the book of Revelation. Okay, as much as we want to put it here, there, or another place, that's why you have pre-trib, mid-trib, a-trib, you know, everybody has a theory. So I'm just taking back what I wrote in the email. Okay, will you forgive me? Let me have it back. <laughs> okay. I can take it back. Good, I take it back. Because I do now thoroughly believe that these, this is a picture of the, the tribulation saints. And when we, when we look at it from who can stand then we understand that those who turned to the Lord during the tribulation were able to come and stand before the throne of God. So these are people that did not know the Lord, but during the tribulation period, Mm -hmm. they accepted it. Yes. And it's interesting when we look at the difference between this multitude who are standing before God and the martyrs. Remember, one of the seals was the martyrs under the altar and what did they cry out what was their cry how much longer longer till you avenge our blood Mm -hmm. okay so they're crying out for justice right what are these guys crying out thank you lord for salvation salvation. that's right (laughs) So here is praise, and their praise is so incredible, and the angel, that even the angels fall down and worship uh, the Lord for what he has done to save his people through fire of judgment, okay? And I I think, it made me think of the book of Jude. There's one line in the book of Jude that says, um, Jude, 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 where are you? It says, um, verse, (laughs) it's verse, 22 and 23 where it's talking about it says and on some have compassion making a distinction but others save with fire save save with fear pulling them out of the fire save with fear pulling them out of the fire that's like a picture because you're pulling them out of judgment okay fire is always a picture of judgment so we're pulling them out of judgment and God has rescued his people in judgment okay so this is be Jews and Gentiles standing before the throne of God giving praise that he saved them because they saw the wrath and they acknowledged the wrath and they are saved and so they have amen blessing and glory and wisdom thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever and true praise like that always leads to more praise and so we know that the the, the heavens were filled with praise. And so then we get to chapter, oh, wait a minute, let me see if I got everything I had down there. Okay. Um, um, these 144,000, just another couple points about them. They, they will be protected. They're gonna have a supernatural protection which will be very important when things like the locusts from the abyss come up and are stinging everybody and they can be out having a picnic where everybody else is hiding in their house, you know. So um, uh, God's uh, promise, this, this, this reality here is God's promise of the sure mercies of David to his people, okay? So it's very important that it is the 144,000 Jews. Um, they will be hated because their lives are going to be such a dramatic um, difference from the lives of the wicked, the lives of those who don't want. You know how we often talk about, like if you're in a workplace or something and um, that people know that you're a Christian and they're all talking around and then oh, they yeah. go, shh, 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 shh. Because yeah, yeah. <laughs> because we don't you know we can't tell that dirty joke if Laurel's here, mm-hmm. or you can't tell we can't do this if Aaron's here, or you know oh there's Aaron, be quiet, quiet, yeah, that kind of thing. Okay, well then magnify that out. Those people they they they've got some little bit of consciousness left, right? Mm-hmm. Where they can they sense well there's a difference between me and you 
and I don't so I don't want to offend you maybe unless they're just offenders but they just you know they, they they do have at least that little bit of respect but they know there's a big difference between you and me and so you know multiply that by the end of the world and seared consciences and how much they will hate the fact that that life shows them who they should be mm-hmm. and they're going to hate them and you know and, and if you turn to John chapter 15 the book of John chapter 15 verse Amen. Amen. She, she, she jumps right to it. There you go. Amen. Y'all got it? Okay. Um, chapter 15 and verse 18. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, Therefore, the world hates you. Okay, so that's going to be the experience of that 144,000. They're going to be hated because the difference between them, the fact that they have been chosen by God, and and the and the world is going to be severe. So, and there will be a time when they will be killed, which seems sad, you know, yeah. because they're going to be these amazing evangelists, but. It's all going to go on for a while, and then the, uh, the enemy is going to be given power over the saints, and it's going to, that's going to be the end. Okay? And so they will die, but they will, they will be raised up again to be with the Lord. Mm-hmm. Okay? So it's going to be, that's a journey for them, so we can watch their story as it unfolds. But, yeah. um, okay, so that's 144,000, just some pieces that came. So they're like converting people. Mm-hmm. The whole time mm-hmm. that they're yes, okay. they're converting Jews or they're converting whoever, whoever. Okay, okay. Jews they, and Gentiles. right? Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Jews and Gentiles. They because like this multitude, this is their work mm-hmm. that they're on the earth they're and they are, they are sealed to be evangelists. Okay, mm-hmm. and they they're like the Billy Grahams. They're going everywhere and one hundred forty four thousand, all four corners of the earth. They're going to go to and and preach the gospel. Now. You know, remember, when you look at our world today and you think how hard it is to speak the gospel to somebody or have them listen or want to listen mm-hmm. and how, um, how just closed-minded and satisfied people are. Mm-hmm. And then just multiply that by hundreds you know, of times because the end times people are, are going to be not looking and and that's why you know the tribulation again in god's mercy seven times worse seven times worse that's why there's more than one set of judgments it's because if that's not enough then we're going to go the next level okay so um they're going to have a hard job these guys but they're they're going to do it and they're going to do it diligently and faithfully and that's a blessing so all the judgments <laughs> Remember, the Bible tells us, judgment, uh, mercy triumphs over judgment. The heart of God is mercy toward the world. God is holy and must judge. So, uh, it's, it must be tough to be Him. <laughs> so, but He is He is holy, and He will judge. The wicked will not go unjudged. But he is going to sift and sort and sift and sort. And if you can just think of all this tribulation, I love the fact that there's earthquakes. Because, you know, the, in Hebrews it says, and I, I, I will shake. Yet again, I will shake. Okay? And that idea, often I pray, God, please shake what can be shaken. Because obviously there's a lot of stuff in here that just needs to go. Okay? So God will shake. And, and these judgments are meant to shake and to sift to get rid of all that offends. Remember he said that the angels would come and they would gather the tares together. They would gather out of the world all that offends. And that's what this is to do. And so in that shaking, there will be a separating. It'll keep being. It's like we talk about Egypt and the plague of the hail. Those who finally 
fear God will be saved. Okay, they will be saved. They'll come back. Now, there is going to be they will be saved and or, you know, and they, they will be completely redeemed or they will make it through the tribulation because they chose the fear of the Lord. But there are going to be those in the tribulation who don't yet know, I mean, in the millennial kingdom that don't yet know the Lord. Okay, they will still need to be instructed. And there will be a generation grow up that can yet be deceived. It's complicated, but it's all there. Okay, so you're looking at me, Aaron, like, how does all that go? I'm just thinking about, like, how many people that, like, we all know that pray and maybe go to church, like, at Easter or something, Mm -hmm. but they don't have a personal relationship with the Lord. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's like the, um, I mean, people who call themselves Christians, uh, but don't have a personal relationship with the Lord, and... You know, we we can't always know <coughs> that um, people who have had horrible, horrible lives of of abuse and trauma sometimes they uh, they look as unsaved as anybody can be, but can completely know the Lord yeah. as their only Savior. Okay, so um, I think that's why grace doesn't look on the outside; it looks on the heart, and uh, God knows. But there will be people who call themselves Christians, who go to church maybe more than Christmas and Easter, and yet they have no relationship with the Lord. You know, that they, they're, they are the virgins. You remember how the, the ten virgins, five were wise and five were foolish, but they were all believers. Yeah, and they were all waiting. They were all waiting. They all believed he'd come back. Okay? That's on purpose that we have that picture. Because those who, who, were, who were not ready, who were not living in a constant relationship, they didn't have oil in their lamps, the oil always represents the Holy Spirit, you know? So they, they weren't in a relationship where they were constantly being filled. And, um, and so Jesus, you know, the doors closed when they went out to finally go get oil. Well, it was late, you know? They, they, couldn't, they couldn't enter in at that time. But the mercy is that they, they'll enter into the tribulation. And you know these movies that have the pastor who, you know, he was, a, he was a good preacher or whatever, but he didn't really know the Lord, and he ends up being the one that goes like, yeah, I did know about this, I did study this or whatever, and he's able to help people who are sitting in his church after the rapture and going like, what happened? You know, why are we still here? All right. So, so it's important, but there will be many people who we think should be there that aren't going to be there, and many who are going to be there that we would have judged as not ready. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Laura, I remember one time Pastor Tim was preaching about this, and he said those people that you see that come faithfully and participate and all of that that don't have a personal relationship, he goes, I call those country club Christians. Yeah, country club mm-hmm. Christians. They're here for the fellowship and social events, but mm-hmm. they have no connection to God. And I thought about that so many times mm-hmm. about how true that is when you don't when you come for the wrong purpose. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And we're you know we're a little bit uh, to blame for some people coming for the wrong purpose because we're yeah. building our churches to be yes. country clubs. <laughs> Mm-hmm. You know, we're meeting every need. And actually, I think and that was the point that Tim was making. That yeah. We have to be very careful that we don't overdo our socials. And yeah. Our, you know what I mean? But that there's purpose and plan in everything that we do. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, then we've had the whole seeker-friendly church thing. So you can get your cup of coffee and go into the church with your coffee and all that stuff. You know, it's, yeah, we, we're, the church is to blame for many of these things where people can get comfortable and they feel safe in the church and they think their kids are going to be safe here. And, um, and I always hate it if it happens to be the church that's the place where somebody gets abused or, you know, very, very hurt. It does happen and it's very sad. And so... To just be here thinking, you know, we're all sinners, folks. We're all sinners. Okay. Um, thanks for these good questions, guys. Um, okay. So we know that the martyrs were crying out for justice. These tribulation saints are just crying out their praises for the great God who has saved them. And then 
we, we come to uh, chapter 8. And that's where we started. Last week we talked a lot about the silence in heaven, right? Um, and and I, the, the point that I was making was that, that it was a silence. You know, this doesn't tell us why there's a silence, so anything we add is, is subjection here. You know, it's subjective. But um, I don't think it's a wrong way to think to say we all need that sense, that moment to remember that this terrible thing that's about to happen on the earth is not something to gloat over or to take glee in and to understand that God takes no pleasure in the death of the wicked. And you know, when our cry is justice, when are you going to bring me vengeance for the my blood being shed and how terribly we were treated? That's a, that's a dangerous place when we're there. And so the, you know, that's to me, 30 minutes of silence to get our hearts in that place of awe as we, we know that a holy God must judge the earth, but I wanna be in agreement with him and not be fleshly in seeing that happen. That's my take on 30, second, 30 minutes in heaven of silence but I also know that it is the calm before the storm, okay? Mm -hmm. So there's 30 minutes of people being in place. I don't think it's 30 minutes of standing still. We have the seven angels being given their seven trumpets during this time. So it's like people are being put into place, you know, get into position for what is about to happen. Um, so, uh, <clears throat> That verse one gives us when the seventh seal was opened, there was silence in heaven for half an hour. Okay, and 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 then if we go on, and I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. Now the question is often asked, who are these seven angels, and could they be the seven spirits of God? Remember, we in the very beginning we talk about the seven spirits of God very likely they could be that this angel and spirit and messenger and all that the same word is used so these could be those who stand before God ready to do his work and as and and so they are given these trumpets and then um, another angel having a golden censer came and stood at the altar I think it's so cool we talked about this and how our prayers you know are are, are gathered together in heaven um when jo when john saw that remember this is about what john saw and he would say and he came uh, and the angel came having a golden censer and came and stood at the altar we don't get any more details in that but we don't john knew what it was right to him it was no no big deal because the 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 earthly temple was a shadow a shadow of what was in heaven so he sees what he knows here this is the golden altar that stood before the veil behind which was the holy of holies where the ark of the covenant was and the cherubim and where the glory of god came down the mercy seat okay so john knew what this was and he <clears throat> he this, this was this amazing place where the prayers were offered up. And then it tells us that, uh, you know, that, that he was given much incense and that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the altar. <clears throat> and um, that this altar, which was before the throne, because the mercy seat is the throne of God. That's another metonym. Okay? The mercy seat is a metonym. For the throne of God and the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints ascended before God from the angels hand mm -hmm. okay. <clears throat> this silence in heaven also allows the prayers to be heard you know this is where we get the prayers of the saints are heard and then it says the angel took the censer filled it with fire from the altar and threw it to the earth and there were noises, thunderings, lightnings, 
and an earthquake. Number two, that's earthquake number two. Okay. Um, do you guys know the um, uh, Peter and the Wolf? Yeah. You know about that? You know, have, have your kids been to symphonies where they studied the different musics and they could go up and stand by the instrument that they liked the, the music from and stuff? Um, but each, each uh, instrument was a different animal, right? And um, I, I said to John, what do you call that? You know, in, in a movie, because like I was thinking, dun 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 dun. dun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> I said, what do you call that when there's a particular music for a particular character, and and he goes. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I said, oh, great minds, think alike. But anyway, um, <laughs> so, um, do you know what that's called? Who knows what that's called, that, that music? It's called character theme music. Okay. Yeah. I know. Character theme music. Yeah, don't we? It should be like metonym. But it's called, if you can come up with a better word, good, tell me. But character theme music is what John said that's called. So, what's God's character theme music? We've been, we've been reading about it. What is it? Holy, holy, holy. No. There it is. Every one of these earthquakes and every time there's lightning and thunder and right, that's God's character theme music. Okay? Uh-huh. I am coming. I am here. Boom. You know, I'm here. Think of it in um, oh, I can't believe this night is over already. Oh, this is too much fun. Anyway, um, and remember in, in Exodus. Remember when God came down on Mount Sinai? Yeah. Yeah, Same I'm thing, sure. right? Thunder and lightning. Okay, so when every time somebody had a throne appearance, right, that they saw the throne of God, thunder and lightning and all that. Okay, so that's God's character theme music. <laughs> I'm not sure how many kids would want to go stand beside that. <laughs> we at preschool this week on Monday, we made, we're talking about weather, we made, the kids made thunderstorms on a paper. Okay. But then the little paper we put on it was like, sometimes God allows the storm to happen, or sometimes he stops the storm and calms the child, but then sometimes he lets the storm go and calm Calm. the child. Yeah. You know, or wait, you know what I mean? I get it, yeah. But it like made me just think of that, because it was like the sweetest thing. Uh Uh-huh. It was like, yeah, sometimes we have to go through stuff. Yes, yes. That's so sweet. Yeah. So God's theme music is right there. And there were noises, thunderings, lightning, and an earthquake. God is here. And this is God's now. If you, you, know, if you want to put anything in your margin, write God's now. Remember they had said, how long, O oh Lord? And throughout the scripture you can hear the same cry, how long, O oh Lord? When will you come back? When will you rescue us? When will you... Heal. When will you relieve our struggles? How long, O oh Lord? And God says, Chapter now. Eight, verse five. <laughs> Chapter 8, verse 5. Right. That's God's now. Okay. Um, okay, so, and then it says, So the seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. And we'll stop there. Yeah. So, because, wow, what's going to come with those soundings of the trumpet? All right. Um, Father, thank you for your amazing word. Thank you for all that is here for us. Thank you for the joy of being together and going through these things, Lord. Uh, Thank you that you... uh, that you're just opening our eyes to see things and to hear things and to understand and Father, I I do want to forever and ever now, when I hear the thunder, uh, not say something silly like the angels are bowling, (laughs) but to say my God's voice is like the thunder. I thank you, Father, that you are awesome and powerful. I thank you that you are just and righteous, that you are holy, 
and you will judge the earth and you will you will make it a safe place lord you will take away all that offends you will be able to walk again in the midst of your creation lord your precious new creation better than eden ever was lord it's hard to imagine we can't imagine our minds cannot even um, even imagine what you have in store for us lord but thank you that we are those who can try we can try to imagine because you have made a promise to us and we know that promise is sure father i pray for each one in here i know that if we went around this room again very carefully there are troubles and callings and needs and and wants and desires and hopes and despairs and there are all the gamut of emotions lord you are sufficient to each one of them you understand us you see us you get us you love us and you will never give up on us father we we thank you that you have made us those who are sealed by the holy spirit that we have that as a guarantee that we will stand before your throne that in Christ we are there now. Thank you, Lord, for being so close to us. Thank you for being the God of our salvation and the God of our delight. Thank you for our Jesus. Thank you for calling us your own. And thank you, Father, for your mercy throughout your judgment, Lord, that you long for all to be saved. So we lift to you, my Father, we lift to you those <clears throat> in our lives who we know are maybe calling themselves Christian, but they don't have that oil coming into their lives every day. They, Lord, I know that when our, um, when our lives are going good, needing to be redeemed is like much ado about nothing. <laughs> but Lord, when something big some big judgment day comes into our world uh, like a global pandemic or an economic crisis lord that that we suddenly think differently so we thank you father i thank you that we have had an experience that made us see that something can make people think differently some did come to christ in fact many and many are still coming because of the upset of covid 19 lord and others are coming because they fear the next thing that might come. Lord, the world is preaching the end of the world over and over and over. They're saying, if we don't do this, the earth can't last. Well, the truth is the earth won't last. But Lord, you have a plan. You have already prepared the way. So Lord, I pray that you would help us to hear the trouble in people's hearts and that you would help us to have just simple words that make them reconsider that God really is good. The world is a mess, but God is good, and God loves them. Father, help us. Help us to do the work of those 144,000 now, Lord, preparing the way. Help us, Father, touch those family members and friends and use us and send workers into the harvest, Lord. And help us respond. Somebody else is praying for workers into the harvest of somebody that we don't know, but we're gonna run into. Help us be faithful, Lord, to share Jesus. And we know that you hear our prayers, Lord, and you answer our prayers. And we thank you, Lord, that when you say now, all will happen as you say. We love you, Father, and we thank you in Jesus' name.